Hello so creative, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Right Touch. So in today's tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to take an accurate body measurement for your jumpsuit. Yes, this tutorial is going to be really insightful and very helpful to you. Please, if this is your first time watching me on YouTube, please turn on your notification bell icon so that you'll be the first person to get a notification when I post my new videos. Thank you and please subscribe, like, share for others to learn. Stay tuned to my YouTube channel. I will be right back. Okay, so creative, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So now we'll be taking the measurement on our model. Okay, so now the first thing we want to do is to get where our front length is. Okay, so now our front length is at the boneless part of the waist. That part that don't have bone. Okay, so you can actually detect that by touching the client's waist or asking her to tilt. She, when she tilts to the side, you find out that part that goes in more. Then you tie the tape around that part. So it means that is where the front length of the client is. That is the waistline where the jumpsuit will start from and where the upper bodies. Okay, so now you can... You would also take the front length from the highest point of your shoulder, highest point of the shoulder, okay? So you take it to where the tape is, like so. Now, the next measurement you're taking is shoulder to the under bust, okay? That's if you are making a fitted one, if you are not making uh, the twist, if you're making a fitted one, you take shoulder to the under bust. While taking the under bust, you lift up the bust a bit, okay, from the under brow wire. So after that, you take the length of the jumpsuit to where you want it to get to, okay. So now, you take the round bust, the round bust of the jumpsuit, the round bust, you take the waist measurement like so. Now, you also take the hip measurement yes the hip measurement is also very important okay how do you get a perfect hip measurement where your tape is you have to pull it down to the part where the tape is not stretching where the tape is not adding okay so what i got here is 39 so that's how to get the perfect hip now the next measurement you want to take is the crotch of the jumpsuit okay but before that as we've taken the front length, which is the 16, now I'll take the back length. So she would have to turn to the back. She will turn to the back from the nape of the neck. I'll take it to where the tape is sitting. That's where I'll take the back length, okay? So after doing that, you will see that you have a difference between your front and your back length. Why? Because of the bust. The front has the bust while the back is flat. So it means the front will always be longer than your back. So if you used to cut your front length and your back length the same, you have to stop it like right now and follow me for more details and more tutorials for you to be up an upgraded designer. Okay, so now after that we've taken the front end, now we want to take the crotch depth of the jumpsuit. A perfect crotch depth should have to sit she would have to sit right. She would have to sit right on a chair. Okay, to get the crotch, to get the crotch from where you tie your tape, after sitting down on the chair, where you tie your tape, you would take your measurement from that part, okay? While the lady will be sitting upright. Don't, she shouldn't relax. Sit upright, stretch your body. Mm -hmm. So now you take it to where the chair to on top of the chair on top of the chair the surface of the chair okay so what you get that is what you use as the crotch depth so after that we would want to take the round knee the round knee here she will tilt her leg a bit like so then we measure we we'll measure around knee like this so this is how to get the round knee of your client now if it's going to have a sleeve is going to have the sleeve from here you take the sleeve length and also don't forget your shoulder measurement very important your shoulder measurement is very important 
Now, to get the shoulder measurement from one part of where the shoulder is to the other, that's where your hand is joining to your main shoulder. So, and also to get that part, you can, she can raise her hand, you will find, feel that part that is going in, okay, that joint. You will place your tape from that part across the nape of the neck to the other part, okay. So, that's how to get the measurement for a jump suit. So, you can see that the measurement is so easy. So, you can also take the bicep, that's the round sleeve measurement of the person. The round sleeve, okay. So, but the most important point is the, the most important point is the crotch depth. So, you don't need your tie measurement with this method. I'll be teaching how to draft. You don't need your tie, you just need your knee measurement. And also, if you are making it a pencil kind of jumpsuit, you need the ankle. So, how do you get the ankle? You should raise her leg. Your so she would raise her leg like this, then you take your tape around that part. Okay, so this is how to get the ankle. Raise your leg. Ankle measurement. Okay. Hello, so creative. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Right Touch. So in today's tutorial, I will be teaching you how to draft a jumpsuit. Yes, we'll be drafting a jumpsuit for today's tutorial. Now, the measurement we'll be needing is our length, the length of the jumpsuit, the hip, the crotch depth, the, the round knee, the waist, and, uh, and also the crotch extension, which I'll be teaching you how to get your crotch extension. Okay, so now the length I'll be working with is 44. Why am I I'm using 44? Because I have minus my front length from it. My full length is 61 and I minus 17 and what I got is 44 inches. So that is what I'll be using for this, for this length. Now at the top part of your pattern, you should give a space of about 3.5 inches. From the top part of your pattern, you should come down by 3.5 inches and repeat the same thing for the side also. So I did 3.5 inches here by the side. And on the upper part also, I took 3.5 inches and I rolled it down. So this part, I rolled it down to the hem where my length is. Okay, then I rolled out my length. So basically, I have my waist here, which is this line after my 3.5. And I have the length of my jumpsuit here. So now I'll be saying this is my waist. Waist. And this is my length, which is L length okay so now we'll be focusing on this part then so that I'll, i want to make the video closer to this part here where i want to draft my crotch area so that you can see what i'm about to do so pretty now i have moved the camera closer for you to see what i am about to draft so i showed you how to take your measurement okay that we'll be using for the drafting of the jumpsuit so now I have taken my measurement and my crotch depth is 12. So I told you that you need to tie a tape around your waist. You sit on a chair and from that part you take your crotch depth. That is from the waist to where you sit, that's on your seat. So what I got for myself was 12 inches. So from here I would measure 12 inches. From here I would measure 12 inches. of my twelve inches. Okay, so I'll use my ruler to connect the line like so. Okay, so that is my crotch depth, twelve inches. So the next thing I want to do is to divide my hip by four to get the width. The hip divided by four. Now we want to form a box around this area. So now I'm using my crotch depth, which is this part. This is my crotch. I'll be using my crotch depth and my hip divided by 4 to get that box. So I'll say 39 divided by 4 is 9.75. So I'll be measuring from this line here. Okay, I'll be measuring 9.75. I'll be marking 9.75. Okay, so I'll be drawing a straight line with it, 9.75. 
okay so basically i have from here to here 9.75 from here to here 12 inches which is my crotch depth so now the next thing i want to do is to get the crotch extension now to get the crotch extension for the front is your hip divided by 20. so my hip is 39 i will divide it by 20 right by 20 i got nine one sorry i got 1.9 1 1.95 which is 1.9 so now I want to just extend this part a bit so that I'll be able to measure my 1.9 around this area. So from this part here, I would measure 1.9, 1.9 inches here. Okay, so this is my crotch extension. Now to be able to connect my crotch extension, I need to take my hip line measurement. Okay, so now from your waist, where from that part you tie your waist, you have to measure where your hip line is at the fullest part of your hip. Your hip. So mine is 8.5, sorry, 9 inches. My hip line is 9 inches, so I'll mark 9 inches here. So, whatever your hip line measurement is. That is what you should put. Starting from the waist, you take your hip line measurement. So this, I will tag this as my hip line measurement. Okay. So now, for us to get this perfect crotch connection, we would, would have to take this part out by 0 0.25. Okay. Go in by 0 0.25. Sorry, go out. So from here, you go out by 0 0.25. Now you place your French curve. Your French curve should be touching here, which we, which we took 1.9 here from here to here 1.9. So your French curve should touch here and here. It will direct you how you curve your crotch. So there is nothing like guessing how to get the um, curve the crotch. So you connect it this way. Then you blend it into the the line. Sorry. You blend it into the line like so okay i hope you understand so after that the next thing i want to do is to get my waist so my waist is 27 so 27 divided by 4 is 6.75 so now i would not be adding a dart to this because i'm i want to make it a twist a twist outfit okay so i'll not be adding any dart so now, but if you are making it as your normal, you want to use it to rock your normal, maybe bustier or whatever design you want for the up that is not twist, you can actually add a dart. So if I'm adding a dart, I would say 6.75 plus 1 inch, which will give me 7.75. But I'm not adding a dart, so I'll stick with my 6.75. 6.75. Then I'll use a slightly curved part of my French curve to connect it to my hip line like so. Sorry. Okay, so I need to connect to my hip line like so. So we are done with the upper part. Now, from this part, I'll take my waist to knee. Waist to knee is very important. Okay, that means from your shoulder to knee. Now, why I'm saying waist to knee is that I'm going to remove my 17 inches, okay, so that I'm able to get my knee. So when I minus my 17 inches from the waist, I got 20, 22 inches. From my crotch waist, I got 22 inches. 22 inches at my waist to knee. Connect. My shoulder to me was 39, so and I minus 17. That is what why that is what gave me 22 inches. So now from where my knee line is, so I'll just write my knee. This is my knee. So from where my knee line is, I'll go in from the side by one inch. I'll go in from the side by one inch. Okay, so from this crotch here, I'll connect it to that part there like so okay so now from here my round knee is 16 i'll divide it by two and i get i got eight eight inches so i hope you understand from here i went in by one inch 
going to buy one inch from here i'll go out by eight inches why because my rounding is 16 and i divide it by two that is eight eight inches okay so then i'll connect it to my crotch i'll connect it to my crotch like so so after that i'll go to the this is what the, your front should look like so now we want to draft the back okay so now to draft the back from the waist you should go in by one inch sorry 1.5 from the waist you should go in by 1.5 on the crotch you go in by one inch the waist you go in by 1.5 and the crotch you go in by one inch then you use a straight ruler to connect the lines so you can use another color of pen to do that so use a straight ruler to connect the lines like so okay so after doing that from this center front which is this part sorry the center back here this is the center back you go up by 1.5 okay so you can as well use one inch it depends on the person's uh, shape okay so there are odd shapes that you can use 1.5 there are other shapes that you can use one inch for me i don't really have this um, big bum bum like that so i'll be using one inch okay to go up on the center back so now out from that part that i went up by one inch i'll measure my waist measurements okay i'll measure it slanted so my waist is 6.75 then i'll max my 6.75 like so and then i'll connect it connect it like so so i basically went up here by one inch so if you are working with a client that has a big bone you can actually use 1.5 to 2 inches 2 inches the highest so 1.5 usually work for people who let me say they are hip line from 40 upwards you can actually use 1.5 for, for them so now from here you would now take the waist measurement which is which is 6.75 okay so now we we'll move to the hip line so my, now my hip line divided by 4 is 9.75. So now any where I'm taking my measurements is from the green line, which is the back. So we are done with the front. We don't have business with the front. We are trying to get the back. So I'll be taking it from this green line. So now from this green line, I'll take 9.75. 9.75. Then I'll use my French cord to connect the line. 9.75 like so so now what i have here on my hip line what i have here on my hip line i will take it down to my crotch whatever you get from here to here you take it to your crotch and then you connect the line take it to your crotch then your crotch there and then you connect the lines like so so after doing that on your knee line you come out by one inch come out by the one inch on your knee line you come out by the one inch and then you connect it and then you connect it to meeting this part here like so okay so now you would take it down down to the knee line okay so because we this part here is already one inch that's why the line is aligning together so you take the one inch down down to the knee to the knee area okay so now for the, to get the back back crotch we'll say our hip measurement divided by 10. you know for the front crotch we said hip measurement divided by 20. for the back hip 39 divided by 10 gives me 3.9 so now i'll be placing my 3.9 from this place where the green line is 3.9 okay on that crotch line area okay so this is for the for the back okay so i basically place it from the back down to this area here so now, after doing that, on this hip line area, you go out by 0.2 like you did at the front, so that you'll be able to connect the line. So now, for this one, you might not be able to connect the lines at a go. 
So, but then you can take it from here to here. You stop, then you continue. So you can take it like this. You stop here. Take it like this from here to here. Then now you now use your French cup to blend it inside the main line. Okay, so as you can see how beautiful this is. So now after that, on the knee line here, you go out by one inch. On the knee line here, you take one inch out. Then you connect a straight line. You connect a straight line. Meeting the crotch. Meeting the crotch just like this. Then you extend the one inch that you went out by to the down part. Take the one inch down to the head, okay, like so. Take it down to the head. Okay, so creative. So we are done drafting the back. So we have the back. The green line is the back, while the red line is the front. Okay, I hope you can see it. The green line is the back. Why the red line is the front so let me just give a closer view so you can see the lines that is green is the back while the line that is red is the front so you can see how easy it is to draft a jump the ankle area the ankle okay so now what i did here i'll do the same thing here i'll take one inch here one inch right so then i'll connect it to my knee Take one thing and then I'll connect it to my knee area. So you have it to use a long ruler. Your ruler is not enough. You can join your ruler. Okay. So I'll connect it to my knee line. So from there also I'll take my eight inches. I'll take eight inches. Like so. And then I'll connect it. So I'll measure eight inches here so I can just connect it together. Okay, so creative. So I've got in the ankle area. So now, the next thing we want to do is to draft the back. So we are done with drafting the front. Now I'll be tracing one out of the other. So I'll be tracing out the back pattern out, then I'll cut the front on this main pattern. So I'll just be placing a paper, pattern paper that I've joined like this underneath this one. Then I'll use a tracing bit to trace out the green lines out from the red line okay so creative i'm done tracing out my trouser pattern okay so i basically traced out the green lines okay which is my back from the front which is the red lines okay so if you don't understand you can actually take the videos the video back a bit so that you can follow the tutorials again for more understanding so i basically use a tracing wheel this is what a tracing wheel looks like i got my pattern paper then i placed this paper underneath this one then i use the tracing wheel to trace out just the green line okay which is the back part so don't make a mistake so you have to use two color of pen you can use a biro and a pencil to do that so here I have my back back um, jumpsuit. This is the back part of my jumpsuit. So I'll just be cutting it out. I'll be cutting it out. Okay, so I'm done cutting out the back. This is what I have here for the back. Okay, so now I'm going to be cutting the front, which is the red line. This cut in the front, which is the red lines, out. So you have to be careful so that you would not cut on the wrong line. Okay, so you have to use color to use color, color red while cutting. Okay, so creative. So I have the back here, the back of the jumpsuit, and I have the front. 
of my jumpsuit so the next thing we want to do is to go to the upper part so we'll be doing our dart manipulation for the upper part where we'll be transferring our dart to create the twist jumpsuit okay so creative so i have my basic bodies here with me so this is the front bodies and this is the back bodies okay so now we'll be transferring our darts but before then you have to know the kind of neckline that you want so you can actually draw your neckline down to your waistline you can draw it down to anywhere how deep you want it to be so you can actually also leave it as a round neck it depends on your style so for me from the from my three by three neckline i want to go down by about by about five inches okay because what i want is like a v-neck line so i'm from the shoulder i want to go back by about one inch okay because of i want it to be a v-neck line this is how i want my neckline to be so now after that out now you would have to draw where you want to transfer the dart okay so for the twist we need to transfer the dart here at our waistline. It depends on where you want the twist to form. So there is no rules to it. There is no transferring the dart is not constant. So you have to do it where you want the twist to form. So if you want the twist to form on the waistline, you would actually transfer your dart to the waistline. If you want your twist to to, to form on the on at the under bust you transfer your dart to the under bust if you want your twist to form at the chest line so wherever you want the twist to form that is where you'll be transferring the dart to for this tutorial i want the twist to form on the waistline so this is my waistline here so now i'll draw a straight line meeting my apex so this is my apex here which is also the nipple point so the rules on your dart manipulation is that any style line you want to draw must pass through the apex it must pass through the apex so now from the apex i would connect it to the mid arm bone if you want to connect it to the waistline it must still pass through the apex if you want to connect it here it must go through this apex point where the bust that and the waist that is meeting that point your style line must pass through that point now don't forget after doing your um sh or shoulder alteration for the front you would need to repeat the same thing for the back so i also take down the take the shoulder backwards by about one inch for the back now the back neckline depends on you for me i don't want the back neckline to be too deep i will just be using one inch i'll just be coming down by one inch again from my normal neckline so because i don't want the back neckline to be deep okay so this is how i want my back neckline to look so now the next thing i want to do is to cut out so that i'll be able to transfer my dart and then teach you how to form your twist so now while cutting you shouldn't cut your bust uh, you shouldn't cut this line here okay this line that you shaped here no what you should do you should cut the line that is sharing the back and the front bodies so you cut on this line here like so so after cutting you would focus on one part is either you cut the front out or you cut the back first so let's keep the front because the front needs to uh we need to really take our time for the front so i'll just be cutting the back first so I'll just so that I can keep it aside. So now you have to cut your back tightening. Yes, your back tightening is going out. This is going out. This is going out. Then the arm over the side and then the down parts. They are all going out because you're not you don't need them on your basic back block. So I'll just be cutting it out like this. So whatever neck you want for the back depends on you so you can just always play around your pattern there is no rules to that how much you can make your neckline or the style that you have in mind 
you can also be creative with it. So, for me, I would also be closing the darts. I don't think I would want a dart for my back. So, I would just be closing the darts or my pattern. So, you can actually close it or remove it from the side. So, let me just save myself the stress by removing it from the side. So, I will take out my darts from the side. Then, I will draw it straight to the bust area. Okay, after doing that, then I will cut out. Cut out. The fabric is stretchy, so I don't want any darts on it. So now I would keep the back pattern aside. So let's focus on the front. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, you need to open where you want the the darts to be transferred to. So before you can close any of these darts, you need to open where the darts would go to. So you cannot just close this part. You cannot close here and close here. You cannot close this dart here and close this dart here. Okay, it would not relax. So before you close any of these darts, you need to open where you are directing your dart to. But before then, I would like to also cut the neckline. Let me just cut this out so that you won't get confused. Okay, and I'll cut the shoulder. Alright. So now, I'll open where I want to transfer my dart to. The rule is that you should always pass through the apex. Any style line that is not passing through the apex is not dart manipulation. You have to know that. Any style line that is not passing through the apex is not dart manipulation. So I'll cut it open like this. Then I'll also have my tape removed. Okay, so now close your boss that. Close your boss that. After closing your boss that, use a tape to hold it down. that the next that you want to close is the waist that you would also close the waist that okay how do you close you just take this line you have to fold this line like so you fold the first line and you'll be lapping it like you'll be crossing it on the other line like this okay then you tape it down So after doing that, you will realize that after closing your dart, this line that is going to the bust and this line here, they are not aligning anymore. You can see there is a space in between. What you have to do is to fill in that space. Now, you will take your ruler from the armhole, you connect it meeting the line. You blend it in. Okay, you have to blend it in like this. Okay, so I hope you understand that. So after doing that, you can now go ahead to cut the side. Cut the side and cut the arm hole. And, and uh, because of this boss, that, that is why I always advise that you shouldn't cut on the main line yet. Cut on the line sharing the front and the back. After closing, then you can now cut the side because of the shortage that you might have around that area. Sorry, your pattern is not supposed to be cut out like that. So I will just have to use a tape to secure it a bit. Okay, so we are done doing our dust transfer. Now, the next thing we want to do is to go into 
the slash and spread and then in the place we'll be doing it directly on the fabric okay so you can actually do it directly on the fabric or